Let's take a look at uh, critical VLAN. Critical VLAN um, is a feature that to address the situation when a fabric edge switches um, are unable to reach radius servers such as ICE. And during this outage, authentication is not possible for the any new connected endpoints. So this feature creates a kind of a, a fallback uh, VLAN um, for the endpoints in the fabric so they can on board and receive some level of access um, restricted by obviously um, SGTs and policies uh, during this uh, outage of radius. So let's take a look when ICE is down in our case in the SD access the new user connects the switch sends the request to the radius it finds it's down so user moves that uh, switch moves that user into a temporary vlan that is called critical vlan for data is 2047 and for voice is 2046 so along with that uh, once it's placed in the critical vlan you can assign any sgts that have been created uh, to restrict any access uh, uh, for that critical vlan during that, the users that were uh, connected prior to the radius uh, going offline, and they will remain connected and unimpacted because uh, reauthentication is paused when the AAA is, is not available um, to the edge switches. So one of the next thing, uh, when the radius server come back online, um, the users in critical VLAN are reauthenticated back to their original uh, VLANs. Next, let's quickly review our topology that we're going to use to test the critical VLAN feature today in our lab. So we've got uh, edge one and two with the client one and two connected respectively. Edges are then connected to border and control nodes up there and we have two border and control nodes in this topology and eventually we have the fusion uh, up there um, connected to both borders and ultimately fusion has access to a shared services area where we have uh, ice as a radius server and dnac uh, placed for this purpose of this lab so we're going to go through in this lab the testing of the features uh, first of all we're going to try and um, authenticate the users uh, while the radius server is up and then we're going to make sure that we break that connection between ice and the sd access so that we can test this uh, critical feature of critical vlan <laughs> so let's um, move on to the um, config first of all we can start the config uh, from the dnac so let's move over to the dnac and start the config we're going to start the config with uh, creating a critical pool so we're going to go into the ip pools and reserve a critical pool in this case we're calling it critical vlan and type is generic we're going to set a pool uh, from the global pool that we've got for this uh, in this uh, dnac and the prefix length uh, we're going to use just slash 24 it's only for tests and the subnet in this case uh, i'm going to use is 100 100.10 slash 24 um, <laughs> i'm going to define the gateway as dot uh, 254 set the ip helper address and dns and save the uh, critical VLAN pool. Next, uh, we uh, see that the critical VLAN pool is created with the respective IPv4 range that we have defined. Next, we're gonna move and uh, create a SGT that's gonna be used just to um, implement uh, to restrict access uh, by default between the users within that uh, critical VLAN. So we're gonna just call it a critical SGT. The number um, value remains uh, default and we're gonna save that. Um, so let's uh, just deploy that to push the SGT over uh, to ICE. I'm just going to refresh and make sure that it, that happens. So once the SGT is deployed, next we're going to move over to the fabric and assign the critical VLAN. So in this case, we're going to go to provision, fabric. We're going to select our fabric and go to host onboarding virtual networks select the actual vn and add 
pool. Here we're going to select the critical pool that we created in earlier. We're going to select the SGT and more importantly, uh, set type as critical pool. We see that we have assigned the pool. SGT is assigned. We have the pool set as a critical and type is data. So once we have set that uh, these parameters, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, click on add. And deploy. Next, we're going to apply that saying deploy now. We're going to go over to one of the edge switch in this case, edge switch 2 and take a look at uh, the uh, config sent by the DNAX. We can see that the critical VLAN 2047 along with the name and the, the actual uh, critical VLAN pool which is 100, 110. Uh, and SVI and etc. And all these informations have been sent down from the DNAC to the edge which is as a part of provisioning. We can also see that the interface for the critical VLAN 2047 is created the, and the SVI um, any cast gateway is assigned and uh, the IP helper address and other list parameters are set. Uh, let's take a look at something interesting quickly. We look at the um, interfaces. We notice that the VLAN interface 2047 is in protocol down state. So we're going to look at that in a minute. Uh, what happens when the actual radius server goes down? And uh, that's when this uh, status of the SVI comes up because as soon as the switch moves a user into critical VLAN, the SVI status will show as op. So let's take a look. We have uh, here um, a client acting as a Cisco router, that is 2600. So we can take a look on R1 that we have the IP address assigned from a normal campus VLAN. The user is authenticated and the status is up. In this case, we are able to reach outside the fabric. That's a part of our policy for this uh, testing. Let's take a look at uh, status of authentication on the edge switch one where the client one is connected. We see that the authentication state is um, is uh, dot uh, one x we're using it's been stopped we're using map and authentication is successful we have the um, the sgt and vlan assigned by the uh, by the process we can see other information like the domain uh, type is data so while tested this um, edge switch one and client one's connectivity let's quickly verify what is the situation on the client two and edge switch two. So the edge uh, client two, which is another um, Cisco router is connected to edge switch two. So first of all, we're gonna quickly take a look at the status on both of them. So we're using two clients in this case to, to test the various scenarios for the critical VLAN. So let's take a look on the client. We have, we see that it's connected. It's got the IP address for a standard normal um, um, campus pool that is 100.0.0/24 and we can reach uh, outside from this uh, client as well that's part of our policy for testing uh, let's take a look at the um, authentication um, session for the interface where client is connected and similarly we see that uh, we have the dot one X, uh, we're using MAB and it's been successful and the user is has uh, is in the right VLAN, which is 1025 and it's got SGT and other parameters assigned. With that check, now let's move on to our one of uh, first test, which uh, where we're gonna make sure that uh, we um, disconnect ice <laughs> to the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly um, uh, make uh, ice unavailable for the fabric. Let's take a look at status of authentication after the radius server ice has gone down on edge switch 2. Uh, it's still authenticated and connected. So to simulate a new users connecting after the outage of radius, we're going to go ahead on client 2 
and going to bounce the interface connected to edge switch 2 and take a look what happens uh, after the radius is unavailable. So once the interface is bounced, so we take a look, we can see that all the policies assigned to the port have disappeared and the authentication method is uh, trying to invoke itself again. And we will see next that uh, if the radius server is unavailable, see what a switch's uh, behavior is. <laughs> and magically we see that the MAB authentication failed and the user has been put in the critical VLAN of 2047. In this case, after the failed um, uh, authentication towards the radius, edge switch has placed the uh, end user into the critical VLAN um, of 2047. So we're going to quickly go back onto the client and uh, take a look and uh, see what we have access to. So in, in this case, we can see that we have the IP address assigned with the log message coming up of 100.110.1 and that IP address is assigned uh, from the pool uh, that we uh, created for the critical uh, VLAN. That's a critical pool. We can see that on a fast Ethernet 00, we have 100.110.1 IP address from the critical VLAN pool. So next we're going to quickly test the connectivity. So for purpose of the testing, in this case, we have allowed access from the critical VLAN to outside world. But uh, in your case, whatever your policy, uh, you can allow that access. We can see that the user is placed into the critical VLAN and is happily working. <laughs> We can also verify on the other endpoint, which is client one, and that uh, is still connected after the radius server uh, gone offline. So we're just gonna make sure um, to check the client one. So we can see that the client one has got still IP address from the campus pool, and it is authenticated in, um, in the previous uh, campus VLAN and happily working. So the users that, were authenticated prior to the radius outage are still working fine um, without any effects. So next we're going to take a look at uh, edge switch and to see what um, the status is in terms of logs. We can see that the port switch is still complaining about the radius server not available. So it shouldn't be that mean. I think let's go ahead and bring the radius server back uh, to uh, ICE in this case uh, online for the edge switches and see how they behave once the radius is available. So we're going to go ahead and unshut the ice and we can see that soon as the edge switch notices that uh, the ice is back is going to start the authentication process again let's try a few times uh, and it's going to take a few seconds <laughs> and magically we see that the port is being re-authenticated into its original um, campus vlan and sgts and vlans have been assigned and that is Critical VLAN, my friend, and hope this has been informative and helpful, and thank you for watching.